What's up, everybody? We back with part two, man. With Hum Dog, Mr. Muhammad, man. And uh, we left off, man. You talking about the relation? That was the changing point when your mom passed. Yes, sir. Yeah, when my mom passed, I realized that I had sacrificed the last moments of her life in order to be in the streets. Yeah, you're in the feds or state? I'm in the feds at this point, and they called me to the chapel. And I'll never forget my daughter telling me, Daddy, Granny gone. And I thought about all the things that I had fought for, all the things that I wanted or thought I wanted, the cars, the money, the, you know, the validation of my peers as to being someone based on what it is that I had. And in that moment, I realized that I had sold the last moments of my mother's life or my ability to be there with her in her last moments for things that at that moment didn't mean nothing to me. Yeah, yeah. So was or she was sick or just happened out of nowhere? Well, she was diabetic and she went in for surgery and, you know, her heart was just not strong enough to be able to help. So it took you by surprise when you got the news. You didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming at all. I didn't I didn't have okay. no clue. I was called off the rick yard. And it's difficult. Yeah. Because my brother and my sister were there in our last moments to comfort her. Yeah. But I had been the problem. I had been the person that she most needed to talk to, 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 to encourage because I was the problematic one. I was the one always in a position. So she always had to be there for me. Mm -hmm. And thinking of it in relationship to the streets, I couldn't pull up. And she had came to see me a week before she died. And she asked me to make a promise to her that I would be more to my children than my father had been to me. Yeah. So as I continued to do the bid, that just kept resonating with me. How do I be this character that I've created in the streets and fulfill that obligation? How do I reckon with myself that life is not as long as we perceive it to be? And then you spend your time in frivolous places on frivolous missions, and then you miss the opportunity to truly be with the people you love. So coming out, my change was progressive because I had wicked spirits in me from being in the streets, from being involved in street activity, I didn't really know what I was gonna do or even how I was gonna do it. So when I came home and I started having more kids and I'm looking at the regrets I have on my older kids and my ability to be what I needed to be to them, I needed something bigger than myself because I was constantly being defeated by my flesh. Meaning, I'm trying to work a job, but my street mentality is getting me fired because I'm too aggressive. Yeah. I'm trying to maintain a relationship, but my distrust of individuals and people here based on coming from the streets, I don't trust anyone. And by happenstance, I got introduced to the Lord. And when I got introduced to the Lord, there was an understanding there, not about me being a perfect person, but me understanding that the demons of my life, I needed God to manage it for me because they were bigger than me. So as God started to manifest in my life, more and more things were, I was able to hand over more and more things. My aggression, my mistrust, my judgment, my vindictive spirit, my violent nature. Because then I begin to understand that that you lead by example. I knew this from the streets. 
So if all my children see out of me is the evil residue, even though if I work every day, the evil residue of my past, no humility, no kindness, no compassion, no empathy, then I would only create inadvertently what it was that I had been in the streets. So my conviction to make an impression on my children's life, rather than saying, look at what these youngsters doing. It is my responsibility to take the gun out of my own children's hand by teaching them to empathize with other people, to be compassionate for other people, to be able to be a blessing to other people as opposed to a detriment. So, you know, my life's goal now is to take it further than just my children to try to rectify some of the damage that I done, some of the bad, bad seeds that I sowed, and be able to tell other people, it's okay to turn to your higher power, whatever that higher power may be, and you pray about the spirits that are surfacing in your life that's threatening to destroy you. Because the thing that I most understand now is that to be a real soldier, you must fight. But what are you fighting for? You got to fight for the value and the promise and the purpose on your own life. You got to see yourself as more than what people describe you as. You got to see yourself as more than certain behaviors you have displayed in, up, in unoptune times. And you got to say that, hey, I'm worth it. So as I approach my life, I approach my life to be better than I was yesterday. So that I can create an example that someone can follow that's worth following. And, you know, that's the changes that have happened in my life and on my heart. And to me, it looked like my ability to overcome the streets was insurmountable. Until I realized that no one is perfect and I have to attack one flaw in my spirit as a time. Irregardless to what anybody says about me or what anybody thinks about me, I deserve it to myself to fight for my life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. That was a beautiful, man. I say, man, I appreciate it, man. I say, you left us with some beautiful, powerful stuff, man. Uh, like I tell people, man, anytime you want to stop by, you got something on your chest, man. You got something you want to get, give to the youth, man. Uh, Stop by DNA T Vision, man. We working with open arms, man. Any lasting words, man. You got something for the youth, man. Anything you want to say? Yeah, for the youth, what I really want to say is you worth it. But the fight comes from you. Fight for your value. Understand, man, I'm straight out the projects. And I can hold an articulate conversation, even though people said I would be dead before I was 21. I'm a father now trying to create a better example for my children than the ones that I had when I was growing up. So no one can tell you what you can't be. I make a legitimate living today. And I pride myself not on the things that I have, but the things that I no longer am willing to do. So value your life. Value, value your time with the people you love and care about. And be a blessing to those people and even to the people that you may not see eye to eye with. Love conquers hate. Yes, sir, man. Beautiful way to end it, man. We thank you for stopping by, man, and you're welcome to come back, man, anytime, man. DNA T Vision, baby.